Now there was a little town called Cheeseville, side in the valley. No, wait a minute, maybe it was on a hill. I think somewhere between Ohio and Delaware, but I'm not sure. But listen anyway, cause I was there. Now the town had a problem back then, too many rats. Rats that were bigger than cats. I know that sounds crazy, my man, but I swear. Good for stupid rats every Hello everyone, this is Darius Young, and welcome to another Blender tutorial. This is in the series, I just wanted to show you all a new trick that I found to be very useful if you want to get uh, fast renders done, and if you want to do it with a cartoony-like style. So I, I already have a character pre-modeled here, and uh, if you're a beginner and you want to learn how to do this, you just have to have the character model. I'm not showing you how to model the character, I'm showing you how to how you can render the character a bit faster and some tricks you could do if you want it to be like a cartoon cartoon to make it actually look like one okay so first once you have your character here what you want to do is position your camera so what I did was I hit zero on the keyboard let me turn on my screencast keys so you all can see better so if you hit zero on the keyboard you can go from the regular view to the camera view <laughs> quick navigation tip in blender if you may be new I don't know but you know if you have a mouse uh, zoom is with the middle mouse wheel just scroll uh, hold shift and click the middle mouse button to pan around and just regularly click the middle mouse button to uh, rotate around the screen you can do the same thing by holding alt and click and you can pan around by hitting shift alt and click if you have windows for a Mac I think it's the option button and to scroll you hit control alt and click okay now wow I haven't used that method in forever anyway so uh, what we're gonna do is select your mesh uh, I have this mess up right into different pieces, but I'm just going to do it with this one first. <clears throat> Make sure in your display, no, in your shading menu, turn on back face culling. Whoa. That means these normals are off. So, to fix normals, all you have to do is select the object, hit tab. Hit A to select everything if everything isn't already selected. Make sure you go to Shading and UVs and click Flip Direction. Or Recalculate. That'll fix it. And now you see that uh, it's not see-through like it was before if we flip it again. So, we're going to do the same thing for the belt down here. Just hit Tab, everything selected, Recalculate. Okay. Should flip the direction and recalculate. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. The belt seems to be. So I'm gonna flip the direction of the belt. Now it's right, and then I can grab all these other things. <coughs> be easier to do it here. Oh wait, oh, everything is set already. Okay, good. So, um, now what I was going to show you. So, you first select your object. Like I said, make sure back face culling is turned on. Go to GSL mode. And then hit tab. Select your entire mesh that you have. Then hit shift D. Right click and then Alt S to scale along the normals. Make sure proportional editing is turned off and then Alt S. Don't scale it too much. You want it a little bit. So about there. Now what you want to do with these is you want to flip these normals inward. So flip the direction and then go in your texture menu 
add a new texture by clicking the plus button. The texture menu is this little black and orange sphere here. Click assign. Click new. Click diffuse. And use this, click this white ball and turn it all the way down. Do the same thing with the specular. And now, <coughs> when I hit tab, you see that my character now has a black outline. It's pretty neat, huh? Now the shell could be a bit, uh, uh, smaller so to fix that just go back into edit mode hit alt s and just scale it down some but make sure you hit alt s regular s will not work okay it's like something got messed up here so let's hit alt s Recalculate the normals, flip them. Okay. Alt S. Because Alt S, what it does is it scales along the object's normals. That'll be a good idea. Hit smooth. There we go. And Alt S again. Okay. That's a bit better. So there we go. And now this works with if you don't want to use the regular renderer, what you can do now is uh, uh, hit zero on your numpad to go to the camera, hit G to grab, move it, place it in front of the character or wherever you want it. Um, I'm just hit, I just hit R twice to rotate it like that. I mean G to grab to move the camera. <clears throat> R to rotate on the Z axis. G to grab. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you the difference between rendering with a regular render and the OpenGL render. So let's go to the regular render. First, click on the camera button in this area over here. And then I'm going to close those two by hitting N and T and dragging this out by clicking on the edge and then moving my mouse. And you see we have three tabs here. We have render, animation, and audio. We're mainly going to be focusing on render. So, click render. So, the time it took to render that was six seconds. Now, if I added some light, um, it'll be a lot better. So, I'm going to do that right now. Because right-click on this light source over here bring it over here instead move it forward go to the light settings menu <coughs> and change it to a spotlight and then hit 7 on your numpad and then hit R to rotate and move the spot in the um, the top view make sure you're in the top view and then R to rotate the spotlight over go to where it says fall off click on inverse square and then click constant then move the light back some and this see this is the stuff you have to worry about when you do the when you use the regular render okay now I can hit shift D to duplicate this light rotate it over here just so it has a, some light <coughs> coming from over here turn the energy down you see here turn this to about 0.5 and then if I hit go into the camera view and a shortcut for rendering the regular way is F12. Uh, uh, you have to hit F12. Okay. No. Oh, right. The reason it's rendering like that is because our object, we have put the black um, outline over it. So let me, what I'm going to do real quick is hit P to separate the selection and then I will move it 
Let me select the object real quick. Okay, so it's this one. I'm going to move this to this layer here. Okay, then I can render. So this is this is this is what it looks like regularly rendered. Okay, took four seconds to do that. Um, so that's not bad, but you know we haven't. If if we were to have an animation that's like 300 frames, that means it takes four seconds to render each frame. So <clears throat> four times three is 12. So that's a thousand. And 200 seconds to render an image. Now I gotta calculate. Uh, I'm not gonna do all that in my head, but the point is that's a long time. So now, now, so that's the regular way you went. Regular way you render. Now, if I hit N, go to display, and check only render, and then I click this render button down here. This this is make note. This is completely different than this. So. And you make sure you're in the camera view, okay? Make sure you already hit zero on your numpad and you're in the camera view. Because if you're out here, then if you click this button, it renders what you what it's looking at. So you want to be in the camera view. So just click it. Okay, so that took less than one second. So you can decide whether you want to go to the regular renderer and render. A picture or you want to do it in here just click a button and you're done um, but I prefer to do it here and um, it's just it's just faster and easier and it saves you a lot of time the downside to this though is that let's say you check freestyle and just for safety you go to post processing and click on the edge well even if I go to rendered mode If I click render, it's still going to render that. So you see, we don't have the black lines that we had when I made that duplicate mesh. However, we go back to solid, bring our background—not background, but our uh, thing back—and then we hit render. You see that we get the black lines and everything and it still took less than one second to render out this picture so <clears throat> you could do that for every piece of her clothing if I uncheck only render and you don't have to worry about lighting and what's also really cool about this technique is check this out it works in cycles okay this completely works in cycles So wait no here we go cycles here we go yes it's completely it completely works in cycles there there are no problems here and so I personally think that this is incredibly boss and I just wanted everyone to know how to do it um, <clears throat> so one more thing that I want to, I just want to do it for the rest of her clothing just so I can show you what it'll look like so let me go back to the regular blender render tab shift D right click alt s again make sure proportional editing is turned off go to the materials tab over here click new turn this to black turn this to black hit T go to flip direction and uh, one second oh I didn't I never added a material to the so let me go and select the thing on the inside plus into the science just so you can see so you see that I did it for a shirt and we could do it for her pants and her uh, boots and everything tap make sure you already have a material just so you can uh, have something to look at if you're just now doing this so like I said shift D right click alt S scale it up 
Again, make sure proportional editing is turned off. Click new material, assign, make it black, make it black, flip the normals direction, and there we go. <clears throat> okay, so this easy technique gets you easy looking and awesome looking cartoon lines <clears throat> from any view for where your character is looking and it constantly draws lines which is awesome it only depends it all depends on where you're looking at it so just to show you I can move the camera over here look at her from this view click the button and it'll still render that and like I said less than a second if that only render same thing so uh, thank you all for watching this tutorial please subscribe to my channel for more blender tutorials um, so decide which method works best for you I personally will be using this in the future so um, anyway thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next tutorial have a good day